right, it is the uh, Illini Basketball Podcast, episode one twenty three, in the uh, in the in the heat of winter. Right the heat of winter. winter. Yep. Yep. It snowed. It's winter. That's not exactly how it you know technically <laughs> works from a calendar and you know, yeah, but who pays attention to calendars? Not me, that's for sure. Uh, for sure. Illinois basketball, they have played a game since the last time we... They have. Do you remember oh. it? Because I know when we get past like one or two days, you kind of forget. So Yeah, I, I think it's starting to fade a little bit. Um, <laughs> certain spots. I got tangled up in some YouTube last night. I was watching, for some reason, I was watching the Illini Drexel tournament game from a couple of years ago, just to kind of get a feel for what that was like. And I watched some of the Big Ten tournament that year as well. But anyway, you know, a lot different from this team. I'll say that. Yeah. Um, Illinois uh, scores 100, 103-65. Um, really played well against Monmouth. Uh, defense was a little lackluster, but I guess when you're scoring 103, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, uh, let's uh, get going with the Pogs, as we like to call them, um, player of the game. I picked Terrence Shannon Jr., uh, 23 minutes, 9 for 14, 4 of 9 from 3. Nice to see him get his form back from 3. Uh, went to the line 10 times, made 8 of his free throws. Uh, just a you know small little 30-point game for Terrence Shannon Jr. Four assists, a steal, two blocks, two turnovers. Um I have here. Do you think he's better at getting downhill than Io was? Uh, I think there's like a difference between the two. I think if if it's from the three point line to the hoop, I think Shannon's faster. Mm-hmm. But if it's like full coast to coast, I would take Io. Okay, that's fair. Um, the, he said that he wanted to get to the line uh, a bunch. He uh, did force ten fouls, and amazingly enough, Terrence Shannon Jr. hasn't fouled yet in three games which is absolutely crazy seeing how Brandon Lieb fouled out of this game in eight minutes. <laughs> so, um, but Hey, uh, you, you know, that, that that's pretty impressive though, to play that good a defense. We'll see if he can continue to do that against UCLA because yeah. I have a feeling that he's going to be guarding uh, Yaquez. Hawkes. Hawkes. Okay. I, uh, I don't know Spanish. So, right. Well, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can really say that he's going to be matched up with somebody if they're going to be switching a lot. But yeah. I'll also say this if he's not, if he's not on Hawkes, he's going to be on Clark or he's going to be on Bailey. So, yeah. it's going to be a huge step up in competition. But when you're playing teams like he's played so far, the athleticism, the ability to stay in front of guys, lock them down, it's just, it's pretty easy, I would think, for someone like him. So mm-hmm. it's not surprising that he hasn't committed a foul. Uh, but it is a little bit. Yeah, it is a little yeah. bit. I, I, I think it's pretty impressive so far. Um, it's also one of those things that you don't really notice until they say it. Yeah, until they tell you. Um, yeah, you wouldn't even know. Uh, Brad Underwood said on Terrence Shannon Jr. that he was on a different planet that game. So He could have um, had 40 easily. I think. Yeah, I thought it was interesting. Uh, Robbie Hummel and Trent Meacham in the post game were questioning if Terrence Shannon Jr. would be able to do this against Big Ten teams, against better competition. Uh, I guess we're we're gonna find out tomorrow, well, right? They play tomorrow. Is it Thursday already? Yeah, I was, I've, I've totally lost on days <laughs> as well. But you know, we can't just act like. He came from a mid-major program. I mean, he came from Texas yeah, Tech. Right. He had uh, twenty, or he had fifteen against Iowa State last year. Fifteen points and four rebounds. So that that counts for something. He had twenty against TCU last season. Twenty-three against West Virginia. So he's done it against teams that quote unquote matter. I mean, his best, one of his best games of the year last year at Texas Tech was against Tennessee, where he had eighteen points, twelve rebounds, two assists. So yeah, so he's done it against. And you don't need like you don't need to do that against Big Ten teams. You don't need to have thirty. You're not right. Iowa. You don't need to rely on one huge score. Yeah, and I don't think that he. Yeah, he has enough around him where he doesn't need to put up thirty a game for. Illinois. Can he have thirty against Big Ten powerhouses like Nebraska and Northwestern? I mean, that's a huge <laughs> question. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Terrence Shane Jr. was phenomenal this game. I hope it carries over. Uh, playing UCLA, uh, you know, and then Baylor, Virginia, Illinois is going to get tested this weekend. 
and it should be interesting to see where they stand. Uh, who'd you have? Uh, obviously, Jay Epps, huge game for the freshman. Uh, had a really good game against Kansas City, followed that up with an even better one. 21 points, 8 of 12 from the field, 5 for 9 from 3, 1 assist, 1 steal. His Ken Palm offensive rating, which I know everybody's wanting to know, was yeah. 184, which was good? Uh, pretty good. Okay. Second on the team, Ty Rogers was first at 217, which I think just means that Ty Rogers was like in the right position, making plays, <clears throat> had a dunk. Didn't miss. <laughs> yeah. Two uh, shots. From inside the three-point arc, he was three for three. So that works. Uh, really good the last two games. Played 23 minutes. Second most behind Rodgers at 28. And uh, tied with Shannon at 23. So I think the big factor here, or the big takeaway, is that Epps and Rodgers are pretty much the two freshmen off the bench that that Underwood trusts the most. I would argue that they're like two of the players that he trusts the most off the bench, period, outside yeah. of maybe Dane Danger. But uh, Epps is playing a lot. Of, like Ty Rogers is playing a ton of minutes. So, yeah, he um, is. Yeah, three <laughs> freshmen have been really good. And Sincere, obviously, he hasn't been completely consistent. But the last, like, you've seen flashes from him. Right. Um, yeah, Jaden Epps, I, I think that he's that guy that, you know, we we have – that can make baskets when Illinois needs to. I think I saw a thing where he is like the sixth freshman that has scored 20 plus points under Underwood. So um, he just, he knows how to score. He knows how to get to the basket too, which is really nice to see um, this team. It, it was like seeing a different team. It was, it was kind of the team that we thought we were getting with Illinois this year. Um, the passing along with the, the dribble drives, Making threes, making layups, help. which they didn't making do in the layups. first game. Yeah, um, it, it it was kind of what we were hoping to see, and hopefully, there this means that they're hitting their stride at the right time when they're going to go play tough competition. Uh, I thought Sky Clark was really good, um, just very under control for a freshman. Uh, seven points, he was two for two, uh, made his only three, he took one rebound, six assists. And only two turnovers. One of those, he was like triple teamed and coughed up the ball. So I'm not really too worried about that one. He had a amazing, I don't know if it was behind his head or over his head or whatever that was, to Hawkins. And then Hawkins, I think, ended up fumbling it or whatever. Uh, Hawkins was not good this game. Um, 17 minutes. Uh, he had two fouls in the first half. So uh, he got... Uh, subbed in, Lieb came in for him. Uh, Lieb did make a basket, so, you know, there you go. good for him. Um, but, yeah, Hawkins, I, I'm hoping that he's getting out of this. Uh, five turnovers for Hawkins, which is just brilliant. He's just, when the ball's in his hand and he's, you know, playing the, the guard position, he struggles and, and Underwood blamed it on the other guys. He said, everybody just kind of stands around and watches him um, instead of cutting and doing things like that. Um, but, you know, I feel like he's scared to shoot threes now after the last game, you know, he goes five for eight, the first game, last game, he missed his first three stop shooting and he only shot one this game. So he was perfect from the line for four, four, four for four, five rebounds, three assists, two steals. Uh, he did get a nice steal and a breakaway dunk in this game, I believe. Um, but yeah, like I said, Underwood, Underwood said, quote, we didn't help Coleman. We didn't cut enough. I don't think he's wrong about that, but I'll also say like Hawkins just gets the ball at the top and like has it over his head looking to pass the whole time. Like he never looks to make a real play. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it always he doesn't he his handles aren't good enough no. either. I mean he can't go to the bat if he goes to the basket he's probably going to get it poked away by somebody, which bothers me. At what know. point do we say Coleman Hawkins is a defensive player only? I I, I, I feel like he's got to get better offensively. I don't know if he will, and I don't think I even he if does. he did, does that really suit like Big Ten play? around the other guys. I don't know if it does. Yeah. I I don't know. Um, him and Danger did have some time on the floor together, which they were questioning if they would do that. I think that they can do that. I don't think, I don't that think they were a, bad. Yeah. I thought they were yeah, fine. I don't think it was a problem. 
Um, and and Underwood talked about Danger and Sky working in the pick and roll. Um, and we'll talk about Danger in a little bit, but I, I feel like you know they could even do that with Coleman. Um, you know, work him into the into the screens. Um, and maybe find danger rolling two bigs doing that. That'd be that'd be fun to see. I think. Um, thought Melendez was better this game. He played 15 minutes, so not a lot of time. But he was four for seven, one for three from three, nine points, five rebounds, two assists, two steals, a uh, couple turnovers. Illinois as a team had uh, 18 turnovers. I think they're averaging like 14 right now. They had 11 against Kansas City. Yeah, gonna need to clean that up. Uh, they could have a 20 turnover game against UCLA, I feel. Yeah, I think a lot of this was probably the fact they were running a lot more, uh, yeah. getting out and going, which Monmouth was doing it to them. That's really the reason why Monmouth scored 65 is because Illinois did not get back on defense as often as they would have liked, I'm sure. It felt like when they were up, they just kind of, you know, got lackadaisical and, and they were up. 30 and Brad's still chewing them. Oh so. God. Yeah. That <laughs> gif that there's a gif or gif or whatever you want to call it of him doing that. It's hilarious. Huh? Cause you can see the score right there. It's a 61 31. He's just <laughs> freaking just out going nuts. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he said, something. I got something later that he said that he just, he's not a kick your feet back, you know, kind of guy. Uh, he's, he always believes there's teaching moments. So, well, you know, up 30, playing. you're still going to get chewed on. He's clearly trying to get the freshman as much time as possible because, like, if you look at the minutes in this game, yeah, like RJ playing under 20, Hawkins playing under 20, Rogers 28, Epps 23, da- uh, not Danger, Sincere 19, Sky 20. So, yeah, I mean, the minutes were spread out really because Brandon effing Lee got eight minutes, <laughs> but uh, yeah. and he would have had more if he wouldn't have fouled out, <laughs> yeah. So they so. should be well rested and uh, fresh, and hopefully have a good game plan for Friday. Yeah, and I felt like I, I guess Meyer probably this is the most minutes he's played this this year so far, right? And nineteen, um, he was one of five from three. Uh, one of those he just kind of stepped up and shot a three. I don't think Underwood was very happy with that, um, but he had three rebounds, two assists, one steal. Uh, you know. Underwood said that he is in the gym on the off days. He's putting in the work. He thinks that he will step up in the UCLA game. He thinks that's what he's made for the big stage. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, You talked about Rogers a little bit. Like you said, he played 28 minutes, which was the most of the team. He was two for two, had a dunk and a a layup, I believe Uh, four points, five rebounds, two assists, a steal he just he he just is that guy, you know. He's there. He kind of reminds me of Demonte, without the shooting ability, um, but plays really good defense, hustle guy, and I, I think that he's going to continue to play. You know, even even when he doesn't produce offensively, he's still going to play. Uh, Dane Danger still really good. Um, Eighteen minutes, seven of nine, one of two from free throws, fifteen points, four rebounds. One assist, two steals, two blocks. Uh, he did get kind of, I'd say, out of control. The the thing that Brad talk, talked about. <laughs> there it is. Not happy. I mean, you can see the score, and <laughs> <laughs> he's getting uh, getting in Shannon's face a little bit there. Yeah, he should have gotten Leaves' face. Well, he was trying to get Shannon back from that other planet that he was on, I guess. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, Brad said of Danger that he was a, an elite finisher. Um, like I said, he was, he's really good in the pick and roll. He did get the ball outside, tried putting a spin move on, coughed the ball up. It's not his game. His game is is more of a free-flowing big, not a, not a post-you-up big, I feel. Yeah. If they start to treat him like Kofi, it's going to be trouble. Yeah, they can't do that. And when they did do that, it it wasn't, it didn't end up well. So, and that's um, against Monmouth, who doesn't really have any real bigs. Big, yeah. And their one big is a freshman. Yep. Yep. Um, Sincere, 20 minutes, two of three from three, uh, one steal, one turnover. We, I commented on a shot. I didn't think it looked good. And then they showed uh, him messing around with the kids before the game. 
and his shot looks pretty good. I don't, I don't know <laughs> what it was those first few games. Um, they, it it looked it looked different when um, he shot the ball. It's about angles, man. I guess, yeah. It just just looked funny, but he was, uh, he was pretty good. I think he was overshadowed a little bit by the other freshmen. Yeah, but uh, uh, I also think that we kind of maybe expected him to be just like he was in the first game every game, which I just don't think is going to be the case. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think that, you know, people saw him the first game and they're like, oh, he's going to be amazing. Well, there's nothing wrong with tempering your expectations a little bit. Uh, and But if he can shoot at a consistent, you know, just to come in and make a couple threes, uh, one of the threes they made, I think Illinois Twitter put it out, they replayed it or whatever, there were 10 passes. So Illinois really shared the ball well in this game. Um, they had uh, 37 uh, buckets on 21 assists. Eight different guys had an assist in this game. So this is this is Brad Underwood basketball. This is what he's been wanting for the first couple games, and he finally got it. It seemed like things were clicking a little bit better. Um, Lee, I already talked about him, so I don't think we need to anymore. Uh, he had two turnovers, a block, two rebounds, two points. Uh, didn't make a free throw on his two attempts. But they were going to give him real playing time. This was the game. He, he, yeah, he got real playing time. But I didn't realize that the Hawkins had two fouls at that time. And Brad said yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, or it was in the post game, that. Sometimes Coleman's just going to have to play with two fouls. So not a lot of confidence in Lee. But, yeah, he was terrible. Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. He's he not did, good. He, he almost got broken half that one. Yeah. Even, well, even he had that sequence it. where he, like, turned and then spun and then threw the ball at the hoop and it went under yeah. the net. That's when he got yep. fouled. Yep. Yeah, that was – yeah. And then he uh, <laughs> had another foul. It's just it's really bad. He's just yeah. – you know. Um, some other notes. Uh, oh. Other notes and quotes. Wow, that's a new one. Let me let me we go. brand that. Okay, eighteen turnovers, like we talked about. Or no, they for they forced twenty four. They had eighteen. They had thirty points off of turnovers. Um, Fourteen of thirty three from three. So they went over that thirty mark. I'm okay if they're going to put up one hundred and three if they shoot more than thirty. Forty two percent also pretty good. Sixty percent from the field. They shot seventy five percent from the free throw line. Um, I think that's that's an improvement, right? I'm, I'm good with 75%. You know, when you got Terrence Shannon Jr. shooting 80%, I guess that kind of helps the rest well, of the team. The starters were 14 for 16. Shannon, Clark, and Hawkins, 14 for 16. Yeah. Two misses were uh, obviously Shannon, 8 for 10. Uh, but Danger, yeah. one, <laughs> Danger, 1 for 2, you take that. Lebo for 2, you also you take that. <laughs> Lee ruined the stats. If Lee doesn't take Lieb. those, you know. Yeah. They're 15 for 18. They should have just not called a foul on that. Well, you know, it's good that Ty Rogers didn't shoot either because that would have been <laughs> just as bad. That's true. But uh, surprising he didn't get any free throws in 28 minutes. He played a very – Ty Rogers, and I know we already talked about him, but he played like a very, like, I don't even know how to even phrase it, game. You know, it was just very – I think – did you say DeMonte earlier? He played a DeMonte yeah, game. Yeah, DeMonte. I, I think that's that's who he reminds me of. Without the threes. Um, without the threes, yeah. Yeah. Which I'm is, pretty sure you already said right, that, but you know, whatever. It's all right. You can repeat. I was it, looking at the know? Ken Palm thing. Some people like, were somebody really might did. somebody might have been, you know, texting somebody when you True. Said, when I said that. Fair. And then we repeat it. So And um, I didn't take credit for it either, so that's good good uh, teamwork. <laughs> uh Underwood uh, said after the game, quote, the ball had tremendous energy tonight. Doesn't have to be perfect execution when you have that. Yep. I don't know. Balls have energy, I guess, these days. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brad was uh, not very happy, of course, about the defense. Giving up 65 against Monmouth, not good. I think, what what did we talk about? They were averaging 46 a game. So. Yeah, they had 47 against, uh, I think they're averaging, or they had 42 against Virginia and 52 against Seton Hall. So that's about 46. Yeah. They said he did say that, um, you know, Monmouth basically had one primary ball handler. So he said somebody asked, I can't remember who asked. Um, they asked about the intensity on defense they felt was different. Um, he just said that when a team has one primary ball handler, they're going to force that guy um, to work hard to get up the court. So, 
Um, I, I don't think you have that with UCLA. So I think they got plenty of guys that can handle the ball. So I don't know if the defense is going to press as hard. I do kind of um, think, I mean, UCLA has those guys, but I also think Tiger Campbell is probably going to be the one with the ball most of the time. Yeah. Um, and then he did say, I, I talked about this earlier, but his quote was, I'm probably a bad coach in games like that. I think every moment is a teaching moment. I don't just kick my feet up. So, uh, yeah, Brad chewing some butt. We showed the thing. If you're watching the video, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or Anchor or whatever else we are on, um, you didn't get to see it. But go check out our Twitter. Um, it is podcast Illini or something. I yep. don't even know what our Twitter <laughs> is. <laughs> yep. Um, he said that uh, the team has been practicing all summer um, about getting rebounds and going. Um, he said, he said that that way, you know, Terrence Shannon Jr. He gets a rebound and he's just pushing immediately. He said, Dane doesn't need to do that. So he wasn't happy when danger brought up the ball. Um, <laughs> so, and he also said, quote, mistakes and you're coming out so uh don't mess up or you are getting bitched i don't think that's true but whatever i i mean he's he's shown that rj like first game rj messed up and he got yanked immediately so i think he um, does it in certain spots i don't think he does it in every situation yeah i don't think i mean you can't just keep bitching guys for messing up you wouldn't have anybody to play you'd have to play lieb and then Lee would mess up, and then it'd just be forfeit. <laughs> then you just quit. Get me out of here. So, yeah, um, exactly what they needed going into the UCLA game. Um, ball movement, dribble penetration, team basketball. That's I felt like this was very much team basketball. And tomorrow, we're going to find out if they're real. So well, I don't know about that, but we're gonna we're gonna find something out. Hopefully, they um, don't get beat by twenty like Gonzaga. Well, okay. Uh, all right, Illinois, UCLA, the first game from Vegas, eight thirty p.m. Central Standard Time. That won't matter for you. You'll be on the scene. I will be there. Uh, the Continental not Tire live tweeting. I'm not a life live main tweeter, guys. event. I will not do that either, except on the Twitter account for the podcast. I will definitely do that. At uh, Podcast Illini. Nailed it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we sh- we probably should have just given you a mic so you could be on the scene, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, but, uh, I, yeah. Uh, the, I, and I'm going to say this, um, you know, we don't do, we didn't do a lot of watch parties. I have a problem watching good close games because I get a little heated. <laughs> so, you know, well, sometimes you know. sometimes I back off the the you know the games that I think are going to be close. So, um, well, if you if you see thing... me standing and screaming at people, um, at the the uh, T Mobile Arena or whatever wherever it's at, is it uh, there? Just don't yeah. mind me, okay? Just is it really at the T Mobile Arena? It is at T Mobile. Is that that's where like, the Knights play? Yeah, that's like a uh, kind of like an NBA type size arena. So. It's a bit of a different type of you know way to play, um, you know. As I'm a very bi- a big component of uh, depth perception, that's going to be a little different. Yeah, uh, it won't sure. affect you know this team as much because they don't have Alfonso Plummer out there just chucking them up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, they're they're going up a weight class. Uh, UCLA, they haven't played anybody either, but they their opponents have been a little bit better than Illinois, and they've still done what they've uh, what they're supposed to do. This is a great event to kind of get ready for feast week next week with a ton of stuff of course illinois yeah, version of fun. feast week is to play lindenwood but whatever <laughs> uh good thing that the syracuse game is on the schedule we could definitely do a watch party for that because that game will not be close yeah um Ouch. yeah so illinois ucla vegas second game of the night friday got baylor and virginia before that uh, UCLA 3-0, they beat number 245 on Ken Palm, Sacramento State by 26. They beat a pretty, de- you know, a decent Long Beach State team, 155th on Ken Palm by 24, and they beat 174 Norfolk State, who's been a tournament team uh, last few years by 30. So, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're good. They're not playing teams in the 300s is what you're saying. No, no. They return a lot of players as well. Uh, you know, Mac Etienne, Illinois legend. He returns there. 
not that he even matters so at all, but you know, he played a lot in the first game and was terrible, and then didn't like play at all in the second game. And I, I didn't look at the third game, but six, uh, he's averaging six and a half minutes. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, but they have a lot of returning players plus five stars coming in. And when I Shooting say five stars, percent from the field. <laughs> yeah, he was really bad in the first game. Uh, when I say five stars, I mean like top 25 stars, two of them. So uh, plus Jalen Clark is finally getting to play third year there. Didn't play that many minutes previously, but he's playing well now. He's averaging 17, really well. 17 points per game, eight rebounds, three assists, four steals. He's shooting 66% from the field, 53% from three, and 100% from the line. Uh, and as Brad Underwood said right there, he's playing as well as any of them. I don't know who them are. I guess UCLA or just any of the general. other guys. Yeah. Okay. Because everybody was talking about, you know, everybody talks about Tiger Campbell and Jack is. Um, so. Hawk is, yeah. <laughs> uh, their really big loss from last season was pretty much uh, Johnny Juzang. It's pretty much the yeah. big loss. I think they still have one of the best mixes of youth and, and vet veteran players. Tiger Campbell back, obviously. He's been there forever. Jaime Hawkes is back. David Singleton's back, who played some minutes last season. Uh, Clark is back as well. And then they bring in Adem Bona, who's number 17 on 247, five-star, and Amari Bailey, who I believe is a top 10 five-star. So, yeah, both starting as well. So, uh, They're good. good luck. I, I mean, yeah. I Hawkins versus Bona is a, a bit of a scary thing to uh, think about if that's the matchup. I mean, a lot of people are talking – this is like UCLA is like final four – national championship team so yeah this i i mean even even more than baylor um from what i've seen so you know this this is gonna be illinois i i believe illinois toughest game of course texas did beat the crap out of gonzaga so that might be their toughest game i don't know illinois is now their schedule now looks really hard coming up but uh, well you know ucla made it to the final four Two years ago, so that was you know, yeah. these guys have been there. Yeah. Uh, Campbell and and Hawk has run that team, but uh, right. yeah, I feel like this is kind of this year's. Except it's not at home. It's a little bit of this year's version of Arizona last year, and it's 2021's version of Baylor. So yeah. Yeah. there you go. Uh, it's it's always good. You, you got to play these games. Like you have to. There's no downside to playing these games unless you get beat by 30. True. True. Um, yeah, and that's why uh, Brad said uh, yesterday, he said, quote, this is a great measuring t- stick for us, tick. Um, looking forward to finding out where we are. He also said, and you're going to love this, uh, quote, great opponent in the secret scrimmage and hopefully gave us confidence that we belong. And, uh, quote, we learned a lot last night watching that team in the Champions Classic and where we are. Um, so is Brad saying they won without saying they won? Oh, they won. I mean, everybody knows <laughs> it. I mean, everybody knows it. Let's just, you know, it's, it's just, they won. True. They beat True. them up, which, yeah. you know, I mean, Kansas is good, but like, I don't know. I, I think they're, you don't think they're UCLA good. I think UCLA right now is better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, UCLA's lineup, Tiger Campbell starting at the point guard position, five foot eleven, but he's been there forever and does a lot of things well. Yeah, Brad Underwood said he's the best point guard in college basketball. Which I think the bar for that this season is pretty low, given the fact that there's not a lot of point guards at a high level. Not yeah. a knock on Campbell; he's really good. But like you know, you got to look at like Marcus Sasser and uh, Tyrese Hunter, and you know those types to maybe be a little bit better. But hey, Tiger Campbell's very good, and uh, Sky Clark, good luck. You know, this is a good matchup. <laughs> yeah, the battle of the hair. That's right. If Tiger Campbell wasn't there, I could see Sky Clark being a great fit at UCLA, by the way. Just saying. Yeah. He is from California as well. But anyway, that doesn't matter. He's here. Uh, Amari Bailey, five-star freshman starting, six foot five. Uh, then they also have Jalen Clark, who I already mentioned. He's six foot five as well. Then Jaime Jaquez is six foot seven. He's been there forever, playing the four. Yep. A little bit of a bigger role this season. Yeah, uh, Brad called him an elite scorer, and he said he knows how to do it. Great quote by Brad. Yep. Um, and then Terrence Shannon Jr. said they were asked because he's going to be guarding him, and Terrence Shannon said that he likes taking on the best player, and he hopes to give him an off night. So, All right. 
Great quote. I, I hope so. Guys well. yesterday. <laughs> uh, really adding to the adding to the in depth podcast you detail. Know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Adem Bona, I guess is how you pronounce that. Six foot ten. I almost heard that as five foot ten for some reason. Six foot ten <laughs> freshman, five star playing the five. So I mean, they're not like a they're not going to overwhelm you with length, but they have you know four guys that are six five or above. So that's pretty ideal. Uh, they kind of I mean they they're kind of built like Illinois, right? Yeah, uh, very in similar a, in a sense. Yeah, without the experienced guard, but Illinois has a little bit more experience uh, in the front court. Um, just because Bona hasn't really been there, but Hawkins is obviously a, big, a big-time veteran. And also they're not – like the team that's going to overwhelm people with length this year is Duke. So that's kind of the one team that you look at and say, okay, they got like five seven-footers pretty much. Yeah. But uh, don't tell that to Jacob Grandison, who can't even hit the rim on a three. <laughs> um, all right, Ken Thanks. Palm numbers. Adjusted offensive efficiency. Pretty big gap here. Illinois 36th, UCLA 5th. Uh, adjusted defensive efficiency, Illinois 23rd, UCLA 19th, so much closer there. And then adjusted tempo, which I think whoever dictates tempo in this game has a very good chance to win, I think. Uh, Illinois 42nd, UCLA 214th. Illinois much more likely they want to get out and run. I think Mick Cronin wants to be a little bit more methodical. He knows he has a veteran point guard. He knows he has some spot-up shooting or they can go underneath to Bona or let Hawkes get some points. Very much of – very – very much half court offense. Yeah, I'm interested to see uh, Illinois' uh, press against a quality team. And I and think they're going to have they, some issues and how they break it. So, um, yeah, uh, Underwood, like I said, had a little interview yesterday. Um, so I just uh, picked some stuff out from what he said. Uh, he said, "Quote: Let's get in the ring, get hit, get back up, and throw a haymaker." <laughs> that's a good quote yeah well box makers all man. around uh, he said that, that he wants that his veterans um to lead the new guys uh he wants to see how this team handles the physicality of playing a team like ucla not some team that's 300 in the kim palm so we will see that he said they has great confidence in sky and dane though and of course terrence and Colmena. so uh <laughs> Yep. He still has confidence in Coleman somehow, but you know, uh, he said that, like I said before, he expects Matthew Meyer to step up. Um, he likes the big stage. He talked about how it's not easy being a transfer, coming to a new program, getting into a new system. Um, he compared it a lot to Plummer's slow start. Uh, Plummer, his first five games weren't great, and then he scored like 21 and then. 30 or something. I don't know. Um, and then uh, Brad gave his own keys to the game. <laughs> so uh, why not? Why not just use his keys to the game for our keys to the game? He said, <laughs> can't turn it over. Obviously. Um, it looks like you uh, see UCLA is averaging about 10 steals a game and only 10 turnovers themselves where Illinois, like I said before, is averaging about 14. So, um, this could be a 20 turnover game for Illinois. <laughs> I just, it, it has that feeling to it. Um, he said that you can't try to make a home run. I don't, I, I think you hit home runs, but Brad's making them, I guess. He said to value every possession, transition D and preventing offensive boards is going to be a big part of this game. Uh, he said that uh, he thinks that Illinois is in the category of elite defenses, which is what he considers uh, Baylor, UCLA, and Virginia in this. So he thinks that he is on that level. Um, so that's what Brad says Illinois needs to do to win. Will they do it? That is the question. Everybody wants to know. Uh, I'll say this. I mean, you look at, their game against Baylor a couple of years ago, they had 12 turnovers, lost the game by 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, last season against Arizona, they lost the game by four, and they had 16 turnovers. So I think if you can stay in that range and not turn over too many times, you could have a chance to win. Um, I think the defense of this team is probably be- definitely better than last year. But, I mean, the year before, I, I don't know if it's better than that. But, I mean, yeah. It's pretty close. Yep. 
Um, players to watch from each team. Yeah, I mean, I am going yeah. with uh, I'm going with Coleman Hawkins. Uh, Coleman Hawkins needs to show that he's as good as Brad says he is. And I hope that he can do it this game. And then I am going with Jamie Jaquez. <clears throat> can you say that for me? Because I don't know how to say it. Jaime Hawkins. Thank you. Um, junior. junior. Is it? Are you sure it's not Junior? Okay. Moving along. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to see uh, if Terrence Shan Jr. wants to shut him down. I want to see if Terrence Shan Jr. can shut him down. Uh, he is, you know, he can score from everywhere he's got a nice fade away uh that's hard to defend so uh i'm, I'm interested to see you know Terrence shan jr like you said um this team doesn't just guard one guy so it's going to be interesting to see you know he says hey i want to shut him down well what happens when he's not guarding him you know what happens when sky clark coleman him, coleman uh, shuts him down yeah so <clears throat> Those are my two guys. Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the the thing that Shannon needs to do, but I think they switch too much, is to put him in the uh, put him in the torture chamber, like like uh, like Matty Sissoko did with Drew Timmy for most of that game until the second half the other night on the USS Lincoln. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. I think they switched too much, though. But that's my player to watch uh, for the Illini, Terrence Shannon Jr. Uh, following up, I, I feel like I'm doing a little bit too much of like following up games, where yeah. like, oh, he had a really good game in the last game. Let me pick up the next game. I'll figure that out, okay? But I just figured the Terrence I mean, Shannon Jr. first right. game at Illinois on a big stage. Uh, he's been really good through three games. He's got a lot of people questioning him for some reason. Like, yeah. He played in the Big 12 for three years before this. So it's like, why are we acting like he might not be able to play in the Big 10? I know it's different styles of play, but he's he can be physical if he needs to. He's athletic, and he gets to the hoop easily, and he can shoot if he's open, usually. So, like, I don't know why there's any questions there, but whatever, I guess. It, maybe because he's never been the guy, even yeah. though I don't know how much of the – I mean, I think he is the guy, but I don't think he's, like, the guy to the point where it's like, he doesn't have anybody else around him because he does. So I don't know why we're questioning him. I mean, I like Hummel and Meacham a lot, but Jesus, guys, you you just <laughs> looking for a talking point or something? I think I mean, so. You know, uh, I think I think Meacham kind of backed off of it a little bit, but rightfully uh, so. And that's probably because he's an Illinois guy. I mean, he doesn't want to question Illinois. But okay, how about Purdue? <laughs> there, Hummel. Let's question that. That's right. Got a bunch of losers out there around uh, Yao Ming. I mean, why is Rostin calling Yao Ming? Like, that, that's not even a good comparison because he's Asian. I mean, come on, <laughs> tall Asian guy. People Yao have been saying like he's been he's been saying the Yao Ming thing for over a year, and every time he says it, people are like, "Dude, what are you even talking about?" And they say, "Stop being racist." Do you no. watch basketball? <laughs> I don't think Rostin watches the game. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but for UCLA, I'm going with another guy that's been really good to start the season, and I already gave his numbers, Jalen Clark. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be able to be that efficient against Illinois, but uh, he had seven steals in their first game. So Yeah, he, uh, he's he been impressive. So, uh, yeah, can Illinois shut down all of them? That's the question. They got five guys that are averaging double digits. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. They don't have a the, the problem is they don't have a weak point. Um, you know, they they like I said, five guys average in double digits, bonus average in nine. So after that though, they kind of they kind of get thin. So I think the key is to shut down those main guys because they they don't go very deep. Yep. Yep. All right, predictions for the game. Here we go. Big big predictions. Sorry, big predictions. Here we go. What do we think? I think Illinois is going to lose. <laughs> um, sorry. Pretty similar margin. Yeah. Um, I got UCLA winning this game, 82-76. I think Illinois has a chance to win. I don't want to say yeah, but it has a chance to win everything. that they're not going to win. I think they need to shoot above 40% from three to do it, though. So that's a And I don't think pass. that's going to happen. Yeah. They're averaging like 36% right now, so. But that's against, you know, very bad opponents. 
Still got to make shots. I think there's going to be less scoring than that. I'm going to say UCLA wins 75 68. Uh, Illinois has been known to keep these games relatively close the last few years, these big games that they play. Even going back to when they were bad, Iowa's freshman year, that Gonzaga game they almost won in Maui. So I'm curious, and I know it doesn't matter for you, but I'm curious to see who's uh, doing the games on ESPN here. I, I would like to see Bill Walton make the trip, but I doubt it. He's probably getting ready for Maui. He's probably been in Maui for like two months getting ready for that. Um, I don't, I don't but ESPNU. On ESPN yeah. yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> it, it, what is this, amateur hour? Right. I wonder Weird. what else is going on because the first game's on ESPN2, I believe. <sighs> yeah. Let me, uh, I'm going to do some digging on that. That's, you know, that's embarrassing, is what I would call it. Personally. Big away. Um, yeah. So, I, again, Illinois, I, I think this is just a game where you want to see Illinois come out, be competitive, um, do the little things, don't turn the ball over. Um, like I said, I, I could see Illinois turn the ball over 20 times in this game. If they, if they can keep their turnovers down and they can shoot the ball from three well, I think that they have a chance to win this. I could be shocked and they could win by 20. You know, they could, they could pull it. That would feel good. Yeah. So, um, probably not, but sadly, I, I haven't seen a spread on this. Um, I bet I could find one. Uh, so the NBA is on ESPN and the college football, NBA basketball, South Florida versus Tulsa. Fair. I mean, seriously, they're putting that on ESPN too. They should flip that, but whatever. I guess college football matters more. At this point, which is you know not something that I would agree with, but ESPN would would say so. Uh, let me see if I can find a spread here. Um, you know, yeah. Um, so <laughs> me and my wife are going to be there. We'll be in Vegas. Uh, if you see me, come say hi. Um, I'll give you a. a There's going to be a lot of people <laughs> lining up. You should have done like a <clears throat> meet and greet. <laughs> I should have. I you know maybe maybe next time, but. Sportsbook uh, Wire has this at a uh, number that is lower than you would expect. Two. Yep. Would you read it already? No. I just, <laughs> you said lower than I would expect, so I I, gave I, I expected you know five or six, and you said lower, so makes sense. Um, <clears throat> that's probably a good thing for Illinois, right? I mean, people are going to be betting UCLA. Vegas never loses. Um, Illinois could win this game. That makes me feel better. Yep. Illinois <laughs> is averaging 92 points on offense. Yeah. UCLA is averaging 86. 85. Yep. Defensively, Illinois is giving up 56. UCLA is giving up 58. Not that any of this matters, but those are the facts. And uh, we're going to find out. Yep. So, on to Big the Big Ten. Ten. Big Ten basketball. Michigan State, surprisingly, 2-1. and one. They beat Kentucky in the Champions Classic double Could be overtime. Three and oh if I, if a three falls, if the wind doesn't blow too hard. True. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, Izzo wanted the the hard schedule, and uh, they played pretty well to this point with that. Now they play what was Villanova the score next. of that game? What was the score of that <clears throat> uh, game on the boat? Like 58, 57 or something. <clears throat> 64 63. 64 63. I was I was on the right track. So they lose by one. Now they have uh Villanova coming up tomorrow. Then they play Alabama, then Notre Dame. So it doesn't really slow down there. <laughs> uh, but Villanova is certainly a team they could beat, I think. Um, but I guess you know you're looking at Villanova and it's like, yeah, they're coming off a loss to uh or they I guess they already had their game after the loss, but they lost to Temple. It's like they're better than that. So uh, yeah, I think Michigan State this season is a little bit – seems like they're a little bit more put together. Very similar team to last season. Uh, pretty much everybody returning except for uh, Max Christie. So and better defensively Tom for sure. Izzo is still a better coach than Calipari. Yeah, I think that's a given. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like, you know, Michigan State looks better defensively. They look like more of a unit. Than they did last season. I think Matty Sissoko, who I know that we all hate or are supposed to hate because of the IO thing, he's been really, really good. Crypto, thanks for stopping by, buddy. <clears throat> Appreciate it. So, yeah. Sorry. I mean, he's playing more minutes. Sissoko is at least. So 
He was big time, especially like when Sheboy goes out against Kentucky. It's like, okay, they're done probably. And uh, getting into double overtime, that proved to be the case. And also, this was a foul fest. There were so many calls in this game, which is not surprising given the state of college basketball. But, <laughs> yeah, not ideal. Uh, your, your, uh, your friends over at Michigan, they played their first high major opponent last night. The Michi- he- Michigan leggings is what they should go by. <clears throat> I've dominated. never seen so many pairs of leggings. It was unreal. Yeah, this game, Pitt got off to a great start in this game, but they still lose by 31. Yeah, Pitt's not good. No, they're not. But They got you know, beat Michigan, by 28 to West Virginia or something. I definitely think Michigan's better than last season. Yeah, but I do I also too. think that's not that high of a bar because they were pretty bad last season other than the tournament uh, run. Jet Howard's really good. Um, Colby Bufkin is playing a lot better than he did last year. So uh, I, th- I think uh, Dickinson only had 11 points in this game too. Or twelve or thirteen, he had eleven points with like five minutes left. So yeah. I didn't really watch it after that. Jed Howard so, had seventeen. How about Joey Bay, <clears throat> who uh, Coach K refused to play, had fourteen. Yeah, uh, and then Buffkin had fourteen, and Llewellyn had eight. Like they don't really need to rely on Llewellyn as much as they sort of tried to rely on Devontae Jones last season. If if Michigan can start playing better defense, they're going to be really good. Yeah, so and they got not good. They got Arizona State coming up tonight, which is like one of those things where it's like Arizona State is the ultimate talent, no results. Like it's the same thing every year, and I'm tired of believing in Bobby Early. Jay says, I wish my buddy would have gotten married this weekend instead of last weekend, or and he would have been at the game in Vegas. You know, you got to get better friends. Got to get better friends. Absolutely. Let's think about this for a second. Think, think about Illinois basketball. Arizona State loses to UC Riverside <laughs> last season, and this season they've already lost to Texas Southern. It's like Bobby Hurley every year. Like the talent is there. Marcus <laughs> Bagley was a five star. They have big transfers from other schools. They have this is a Frankie Collins revenge game tonight for Michigan against Michigan because you know obviously played at Michigan last season had a really good game in the first round of the tournament for Michigan last season. But he is at Arizona State. I think Michigan beats them up pretty good. I think they're a lot better. Arizona State, like I said, ultimate Michigan plays talent, tonight. no results. Yep. It's the Legends Classic thing. They beat v- Arizona State beat VCU somehow, which doesn't really make that much sense. And then, yeah. So, hmm. uh, and then I, I mean, they do play Virginia and Kentucky in uh, late November into December. So that'll be interesting to see. And, you know, uh, Michigan's version of Feast Week is to play Jackson State. So similar to Illinois. And let's play a sub 300 team in Feast Week when everyone else is having fun. Uh, all right, the Gavit games, which is just the biggest joke on planet Earth. There's like three, there's maybe two good matchups this season. I would say Michigan State, Villanova, and Indiana Xavier. Yeah, the good matchup. I mean, Iowa Seton Hall was pretty good. Uh, you know, I guess whereabouts, right? Um, so you asked if the Big East had won yet, and they did. DePaul beat Minnesota. So okay, that's right. Yep, and uh, then you had Penn State and Butler, <laughs> which. You know, let me just scroll and act like I know the result of that. Uh, Penn State beat them by six. There you go. And DePaul's the only team that's won out of the Big East. Uh, I think, yeah, because Northwestern beat Georgetown. Purdue beat Marquette. Iowa beat Seton Hall. <laughs> you have St. John's and Nebraska tonight. So if you want to watch Andre Curbelo, it's 530 on FS1. They you had Xavier. in that game the other night. Um. Let me give you let me let me check that for you. Nope. They are three and Okay. And they're fifth in the country in tempo. So I believe that. How many turnovers are they averaging? Well, let's see. Against Central Connecticut, they had uh seven, so that's pretty low. Dang. What the hell happened? Curbello <laughs> made sure to have two <laughs> of the seven. But uh yeah, I feel like if you want to do if you wanna if you don't want to do cocaine but you want to feel like you're on cocaine be a st john's basketball fan this season i think that would do you uh anyway i'm not advocating for that but i'm just saying if you want that then you know it's up to you obviously it's a free country they only had 10 turnovers against lafayette so it was really the first game where it was like jesus this team's gonna turn the ball over 29 times so they followed it up with 10 and 7 so that number is getting down so big ups on that one uh you got indiana xavier tomorrow night nobody cares Indiana's going to win. 
Michigan State Villanova tomorrow night as well. It looked like it sounded like someone was trying to break into my door, and that's it. So the, the the schedule for that stinks, and the Big Ten is dominating it. I yeah. I think they might only lose one more game, and that would maybe be Michigan State having a down a letdown uh, spot. Are we? Uh, I mean, or I was Nebraska, in the, I was in the boat that the Big Ten wasn't good this year. Is the boat shifting? I'm not ready to go there yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's certain teams that are better than we expected just because the expected, like why do people keep like not like nobody is ever, unless they have all American level talent ever high enough um, on yeah. Iowa preseason. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's every year. And I was pretty high on them this season to say they're going to be better than everybody thinks, which is just always the case. But uh Ohio State, I'm not too sure yet. I think it's going to take a little bit for them to get going. They let Eastern hang, hang around uncomfortably long last yeah, night. Yeah, but the good thing for them is they only gave up 43 points overall. So. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Uh, Purdue, I don't know. I mean, it's just like I don't think that they're that good. But, you know, Marquette's a decent win, so maybe I'm wrong about them. Um, Indiana looks really good, but they haven't played anybody yet. So we're going to see with Xavier. So I think the Big Ten is better than we expected, but the expectations weren't high. So I would love for the Big Ten to be like the terrible conference that ends up doing well in March like the ACC did last season, but that doesn't seem possible. Too much talent. Too many good teams, apparently. Yep. So, All right. All right. The Big Ten ACC Challenge is coming up in a couple weeks. That'll be you know, a good time to, for the Big Ten to absolutely dominate, I would yeah. presume. I mean, whoever's playing uh, – Florida State and Louisville, there's some freebies for you, and Pitt as well. It's true. So, Are you trying to drag this out to an hour or what? No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> Maryland, Maryland, Louisville, by the way, just so we're uh, aware of Maryland. And, uh, <clears throat> I should Purdue, be a barn burner. Purdue, Florida State, <clears throat> wasting – well, they're not really – Illinois or the Big Ten's not wasting their good teams on those teams. Uh, Northwestern, though, against Pitt, that's going to be – a big one there. So, all right. Uh, that'll do it for us. Uh, we'll see you for episode number 124. That'll be Saturday. maybe Saturday from Probably. Vegas. Um, yeah, we'll see when how the, the game Sunday. We'll see how the Wi Fi is. Uh, 12. Well, it depends. Uh, they're at 12 and 2 30. So, We'll figure it out, but we'll see if after the UCLA game, we'll talk about that game and uh, yeah. get you ready to play uh, Virginia because that's what's going to happen. All right. <laughs> That'll not. do it for us. We'll see you next time on the Atlanta Basketball Podcast episode 124. We'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>